Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is BMO News Night. We have all the latest from today's sessions. My broadcast colleague Alexandra is reporting from SOCOM and the Council of the European Union. I'm Alexandra Ovchinikova, reporting from the sport. Here behind this closed door is a, uh, running the second day of the SOCOM committee session. The 31 Stockholm member states are discussing the issue of international drug trafficking. Germany made a sensational announcement in course of the session. Around 10% of the European Union budget may be spent on combating the drug trafficking. We are going to give it all together. All the developing European countries like France, like Germany, like the United Kingdom, Italy, because to give it separately, it is really difficult. Heated debates are still going on over the drug legalization. While the Latin American countries propose legalization of possession of some light drugs such as marijuana, the European countries, the US and Russia, speak strongly against this measure. There are a lot of people in jails all across Latin America who are incriminated just for possession of marijuana and that's unacceptable because the um, jails are already overcrowded. We don't see um, any efforts from these countries to, to, to eradicate the illegal use of drugs. Other anti-drug trafficking measures include strengthening of the border security and training of the national security authorities in the production countries, as well as alternative harvesting opportunities. Pakistan is committed in this committee to hopefully assisting to resolve that problem by uh, instituting a drug crop replacement and compensation program that will hopefully assist farmers in switching to other crops that will be equally as lucrative with the financial assistance of some Western nations uh, and away from the growing of opium. The Council of the European Union held a press conference on the Youth Guarantee Program today. The program is expected to resolve the youth unemployment issue in Europe. We would like to focus on educational as well as economic reforms. They will have to offer some type of program so to kind of bridge this gap between education and careers. The Youth Guarantee Program is built up on three pillars. First, subsidies for companies that provide young unemployed people with jobs. Second, apprenticeship and training guarantees for the young people who remained unemployed for more than four months, and a third, job creation through the development of the alternative energy sector. By using European Union uh, social funds to support green energy infrastructure in Greece, Germany will also see a great return on its investment due to the fact that Greece will need professionals from Germany as well as German hardware and expertise. Still, there are points that remain unclear. For example, what part of the EU unemployment fund is going to be spent on the program? While Germany, Ireland and Greece propose using its 60%, countries like Finland demonstrate a more careful approach. It would be best not to throw all of that money onto the table right away and um, rather to slowly see how the plan that we've created will unfold. The debates are going to continue tomorrow. Two draft resolutions are expected to be presented. Thank you, Alexandra, for these interesting insights. Today, the International Court of Justice was in session. After bilateral talks failed between the Islamic Republic of Iran and the Republic of Iraq, the ongoing disputes over armed confrontations and geopolitical positioning might be settled by the court. In the following report, we met with the legal representatives and jury. Both parties emphasized that the decision to present the case to the ICJ has been reached mutually. As they were preparing strategies for the next sessions, we were interested in their expectations. Thus, modern technology, especially the deployment of drones, make a difference in legal disputes. The most important thing is that civilians were killed, and the way they were killed does not really matter. Additionally, the sovereignty of Iran was breached. This can never be done, whatever the, the, the way of, of war is. It's the same as the bombing. Eventually people are getting killed and all we need to do is protect those people from being killed. We need to make sure that the security of the people is the most important thing. It is yet to be seen how a legal decision in this series of conflicts will be enforced. Even though the delegations appear hopeful, the jury expressed some concerns. Although they agreed, the decision is still, it's only as binding as the states agree to it. So it's really just, it, it sets a, hopefully it sets a precedent in the case. Now on Newsnight. How were negotiations perceived in the United Nations Security Council today? We have talked to delegates from the United States and the Russian Federation after the session to see if any advances have been made concerning the crisis on the Korean Peninsula. I can say that uh, somehow it uh, even deteriorated because we have casualties, uh, 
in the Korean Peninsula we have more refugees and uh, recently we received the news that uh, the Prime Minister of South Korea uh, was killed in the uh, incident with plane crash. We have a huge progress led by Russian Federation in order to uh, effectively response to the developing crisis in North Korea. Right now the Council is very close to reach an agreement that will establish joint military force that will secure the nuclear weapon site in North Korea. Also eine globale Eskalation im Sinne eines nuklearen Konflikts, das sehe ich nicht einfach, weil keiner der Seiten äh, Interesse an so einer Eskalation hat, vielleicht außer gewissen Akteuren innerhalb von Nordkorea. Ähm, da sehe ich nicht die Gefahr. Ähm, Allerdings äh, die Gefahr, dass beispielsweise die atomare Technologie, Waffen und ähnliches ähm, durch diesen Zerfall verbreitet werden, auch äh, an Akteure gelangen, die vielleicht diese Waffen nicht haben sollten und die dann global Bedrohung darstellen, das kann passieren. And now to our daily segment on sustainability and the Green Conference project. Today's question has been how much CO2 is emitted by production of a one kilogram potato? I have absolutely no idea. 10 kilograms. 100 grams? I'm American, so I don't get kilograms. And the correct answer has been 140 grams. Well, that's all for today. We wish you all a pleasant evening and a great successful day tomorrow at the conference. Um, we close this edition of Beeman News Night with a short summary of this Monday's event as seen by our delegates. I'm John Froese. You were watching Beeman News Night. Good night. Sometimes countries can make very, take su very surprising positions. It is really cool that so many people from so many different countries are here, so we have a lot of insight into what is actually happening. I was really surprised that we had a visit from the NGOs today, and I really like that, that they show support for us. Uh, today I delivered in my committee a singing speech. Overall it was productive and uh, everyone's uh, ready to go to Fiddlers tonight. People are so friendly, you know, and I have so many friends right now from all over the world, so I'm so happy that I'm here. Yeah.